In this video, I'm going to be taking my sword swing attack tutorial uh, scene, and I am going to be making it into a combo attack. So what are we starting with? Uh, if we press play, we have this little dude, and if you press square, he has an attack. I want to make it so that the first time you press attack, it does this swing. The second time in quick succession, it'll attack the other way. And then the third time, it'll be like an overhead smash. It, it's your classic uh, three hit combo. So let's start off with just grabbing my combo chip from the Dreamiverse. If we go to search and type in the word combo, it won't come right up, but if we scroll a little bit to the right, um, we see right here, basic combo attack by a search. Cool, so here it is, basic combo attack. I think what we wanna do is actually take this right here and put it into that node like that. Now, where do we hook up the attacks? Well, these are the animations. So what we actually want to do is put, put our attack in here. Um, alternatively, we could, and this is what I'm gonna do, uh, we can put this knock gate in this. What does this knock gate do? This is the window where you can activate the next attack. Next combo attack window, see? So if the, if the animation is playing and the playhead is turning this knock gate on, if you press the attack button again, it'll go to the next attack. So that was pretty easy to, to change our attack to fit with this knock gate, but we're not done yet. Um, we need to make sure these settings are exactly the same. So it needs to be sustain. This wire needs to be put on rewind. This wire needs to be put on on end trigger. And obviously this one needs to be power. So now we have successfully um, swapped out the default timeline with this one. It's probably easier just to build your animation in the timeline that's right here, but I'm assuming you're taking your attack and you are making it into a combo attack. That is that is how you add an attack in. Um, and now I'm going to do that for the two other attacks. I'm gonna make two other attack animations for these two timelines. All right, the three animations are made. They are not the best, but this is not a tutorial on how to do sword swinging animations. It's a tutorial on how to do combos. So he, anyway, here is this one. And I literally just reverse this one. Like I, I just, sw I just, I literally like reverse the keyframes. And then here's this one. And an important thing actually is to, so th these, these attacks are not actually starting at a neutral at a blank keyframe. Normally I do that, but these are not. The reason we're not starting the animations with a blank keyframe is so that if you're doing the combo attack from one attack to the other, it's it's a smooth transition. And um, speaking of which, uh, another thing you can do to make it even smoother is to, is to make sure the last frame of the attack, that's not a blank frame, is, is over top of the, the window, right? So we, we don't want you to be, like if the window's here, you could potentially press square to do the next attack when you're basically already in, back to the neutral position. We don't want that. So if we make the window here, that'll be better. And another thing we can do is make it um, ease in or ease out, whatever this is. Let's do that to the other two. Now let's see how smooth this is. Ooh, uh, it looks like it looks like the second one. This knot gate appears to be too small, so let's make that bigger. I wasn't even I wasn't able to trigger it. There we go. Uh, it looks like we're not dealing any damage at the moment. Let's try to fix that. So for some reason, the health modifiers field went very far away. So this should be a pretty easy fix. All right, so now it actually deals damage. I think I'd like to go over how this actually works now. Hopefully for the beginning part of this tutorial, you were able to actually like implement it. But um, knowing how it works is pretty important to being able to make 
changes to it without just randomly changing stuff and hoping it works. So let's get into that. The entire combo is represented by this selector. Um, A means you are not doing anything. You're in the neutral state. Once you press square, you go to the next output. You, you go to the next selector um, output, which is B. B is the first attack. And you'll notice how B is hooked up to the power of this attack. That's simple enough. Um, let's just let's just follow it. So that's reset. Uh, combo attack one. B. So we press square. We're in A. Moves us to B. B powers on the timeline of the first attack. Uh, let me name these really quick. All right, they are now named. B is powering on the timeline for attack one. The timeline is playing, and once it reaches this knot gate, this knot gate turns on. The knot gate turning on will turn, uh, will will power this node. Next combo attack window. This node is turning on this node, which allows the square signal to go through. Um, if square is pressed, we go to the next output, and it does the same thing. It does the exact same thing. This time, attack two, combo attack two will be powered on. Then once the knock gate, the knock gate, once it reaches the knock gate, it'll let us press square again, etc., etc. What if we let the timeline finish? What if we don't press square? Well, on end trigger, combo reset. Combo reset is plugged into A, which puts us back at the start, which was the neutral setting. Now, if that is all that happened, we would have some issues. Um, these timelines are on sustain. They're not on play once, they're on sustain. The reason they're on sustain is because we're stopping them in the middle of their animations, potentially. So like, it's right here. We press square, it immediately turns off, and this one turns on, because again, the selector is switching states. Well, once you get back to combo attack one, it would start here, and that's not what we want. So, every time we press square, every timeline is reset right here see reset timelines and that's all you need to know that's the entire system i guess we didn't cover getting to attack three but once we get to attack three you can press square you don't have to press square if you don't press square it just brings you back to a and if you do press square it goes to the next output selectors loop all the way around so going to next would bring you to a uh, there's one more thing uh, that I probably should cover, maybe. It's pretty obvious, but uh, right now, if I'm holding square, it just does the combo. Um, if you don't want that, literally all you have to do is make the square button pulse in using a signal manipulator. Now that the square button is pulsed, you cannot hold it because it's a pulse. So you have to kind of spam it and that's it that that's how to do a combo attack this tutorial was heavily requested and for good reason this is a really like common thing you want to do so i'm really glad to be able to make this the link to this remixable scene is going to be in the description uh, if you need any additional help definitely check out my discord it's a great place to ask for dreams help um, and i also stream dreams on twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, where you can watch me do stuff live. And if you have any questions about pretty much anything, you can ask them there as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you guys later. I just wanna be